Hello everyone. In this lesson, I will teach you how to copy and implement this script for yourself. First, you must make a copy of this sheet. Click on File, then make a copy. Then type in the desired name for the copy. I will enter my copy and click OK. A new tab with the copy will open up automatically. Now when you run a script for the very first time, Google will require you to activate the script from a certain account. If you don't have a Gmail, just sign up for the Gmail service and it's completely free. It comes with a bunch of great features. So I will activate the function for the very first time on this sheet. Anytime you make a copy of a sheet, you will have to have the functions be approved only one time and it will work from then on. So I'm going to click on track to activate the function. It will take a moment the first time but it will be nearly instantaneously thereafter. So the authorization required window has opened up. I will click continue. And I will click the desired account I want to run the function. When this window opens up, click on advanced. And then go to tracking code. This will allow the script to run. Click Allow. Notice the script has successfully ran successfully. This ends the, this lesson. Thank you very much. And on to the next lesson. Okay, here's the source code of the Google Sheet Package Tracker. Um, how the UPS section works is that it takes a simple XML formula and then slaps it next to a UPS tracking ID. The FedEx portion actually looks at the website um, and looks at the data available and uh, it imports to the delivery status. Um, if the status is anything other than delivered, it will rewrite that cell until it says delivered. If it does say delivered, it will just um, let the status always be delivered. Hello everyone, now that you understand the underlying source code to this sheet, you probably want to change the layout of this sheet. But when you change the layout of the sheet, you must also change the sheet script um, to compensate that. Because if the coordinates of the sheet don't match the coordinate of the script, the script will not work. So to give an example of this, I will add a column and run the script and show you it will not work. Notice how the script has finished running, but the shipment status has not successfully populated. So I'm going to revert the sheet to how it was and run the script again. Notice how the shipment status did successfully populate this time. But now I'll show you how to uh, change the layout and edit the script to compensate for that. So I've added a column. I'm going to uh, underlying script. And look at line 11, 12, 13, 14. This is where the data is specified where it lives. So the I 
in, in these parentheses is a, a variable that the script changes um, as needed to run through all the relevant rows. Um, the second value after the comma is a number signifying the relevant column. So the UPS data lives on column 1 and 2, and that's specified on lines 11 and 12. The FedEx data lives on 3 and 4, as specified by line 13 and 14. But I've changed the layout to have one column extra to the left. So how many values should I add to these columns to compensate for that one column? Well, I just need to add one value. So I'll add one to all these numbers to compensate for that one column. If I added two columns to the left, I would add two to all these numbers. Let's say I added some columns between um, the, the UPS data and the FedEx data. Well, then I will only add one to um, line 13 and one to line 14 because I will only add one column between them, which would push the FedEx data one column to the right. So now I'm going to compensate for the actual change I did make which was just one column. So I'm adding one to all these values manually by typing it, by deleting the numbers and typing it with my keyboard. Now that I've made some changes to the source code, I must save it. Now let's go back to the sheet and activate the script by clicking on the track button. Notice that the shipment status did successfully populate. So that uh, wraps up this lesson that has taught you how to change the layout and compensate for that in the script. On to the next lesson. Hello everyone. So this sheet can track parcels from UPS and FedEx, but currently it does not implement any other carrier. Um, depending on the courier and how they implement their systems um, will greatly change how you will try to look up that data. Um, from for sites like UPS, it's a simple XML formula. Um, you just have to customize the URL of the carrier um, and customize the way this formula works, um, and just refer this section to a to a cell and just change. Um, the HTML element of this formula to the HTML element on the carrier's website. Um, I will show you how to do that now. So you go to the website, you right click your browser, and you look at the source code. So the source code will pop up, and what you have to do is just with your mouse go over the entire website until you see the delivery status be highlighted um, by your internet browser, and then there'll be a div class specified. So if you know, if you notice here, the div class for this section is container fluid IW section um, you just have to change after you've successfully hired the specific element you want change it to the div class displayed by the HTML um, of the website um, 
sometimes is a widget and you won't be able to use this method unfortunately but this is the most common way you could program um, another courier um, in the future I plan on adding more couriers myself um, if you message me um, I probably will add it as uh, people ask me to Okay, thanks guys. Hello everyone, in this lesson I will teach you how to insert an image and assign it a function. Um, but first, we need an image. So how to create this track button, I went to a website called thebuttonfactory.com. Um, you can create your own customized uh, button on this website, and you don't have to use this website. You can use your own um, website, or you can use your own program that you want. You can use Photoshop, you can use Affinity, you can use Microsoft Paint. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Um, you just need a image, and you can sign it any function. Um, you can just go ahead and go to Google search and use any image you want from there. Um, but I'm just showing you the method of how I created that button real quick. Um, to customize the text, you just go to the text section and type in the text you want. So I'm going to type in button. And now I'm going to just change the color real quick. Okay, now I'm going to go to download. Now that I have an image ready, I can insert the image. So what you just go to do the sheet. And go to image, and you can either drag and drop to this window, or you can click choose an image to upload and specify this folder you want to look at and select the image from that folder. Um, so the, the button that I want is right here, so I'm going to click on it, and it's being uploaded, and now it's been inserted into the Google Sheet. To assign it, a function just click on the image and the three dots will appear on the right hand corner click on the three dots and click assign script now the default name of, of the script is track um, you can see that um, right here um, the default name on line one is track but you can either copy and paste it or just type it out and then press up. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to click on the button. And now you can see that this script has been successfully assigned to the image and will run every time you click on the button. Um, you can also uh, change the function of an image that's already there by right clicking the image and then clicking the three dots and click assign script um, and then you can change the assigned script to the image as you please um, you can also um, click on the three dots um, to just change the image um, by clicking replace image um, Google Sheets does have a, a, a a default way of inserting uh, shapes and images that you can customize. It has like its own mini image editor within within itself. And I'll just point that out real quick. You just go to insert drawing. And then what you want to do is click this circle and square to bring up shapes. And then go to this drop down menu and click whatever shape you want. I'm just going to get a circle real quick, put in a circle, and um, you can type in whatever you want into the shape, and just put save and close. And you can just assign whatever function you want to the, to the shape and image you create from that little mini image editor that's built in. Um, if you have um, alt text, um, what that does is assign like the description of the image. It won't really affect the script or the image itself at all. 
Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so he, I, you can delete it from the three dots as well as right click and delete. Okay. Um, so those are some several ways you can insert an image. Um, so that concludes this lesson. Thank you. No.